This is the Sony ZV-1 versus the Canon G7X Mark III. Which is better for you in 2022? Hi everyone, this is JD, your gadget review friend. Welcome and welcome back to Gadget Rev Now. Today, another camera series, we're talking about the best watching sensor cameras to date the Sony ZV1 and the Canon G7X Mark III. Both are being sold less than one grand, and you may see price differences depending where you buy it. I'd say if you're in the market today and contemplating what to buy in 2022, whether you are a street photographer, a vlogger, or just need something better than your phone for family portraits and events, which is better in 2022. This is the ultimate comparison of these two cameras. We will check the similarities, the differences, and the missing features. Let's go to work! Let's start with the similarities before we begin. There's a year-old gap between the two. Canon G7X is already 3 years old, and Sony ZV-1 turned 2. But these two cameras are still the best point-and-shoot cameras you can buy today. Maybe the Sony RX100 Mark 7 hold the top spot, but these two are easily in the top 3. First, let's talk about the similarities. First, there's wireless connection. You can download the app for Canon or Sony on Play Store or App Store. They have Bluetooth connection and you can remotely control both of them. They also have built-in ND filters and I always use them to make sure I don't increase the shutter speed too much and maintain it low for a fast-moving subject. Both have optical image stabilization that helps with walking pipe vlogs, moving around, and panning. Both have face detection autofocus and they perform really well tracking my face when I do videos with these cameras. They have the same wide focal length and 1.8 aperture, so in a nutshell, if you vlog using these cameras, they will have the same output almost. They can be used as webcams for live video streaming or even video calls. Both a selfie or vlogging screen for Sony ZV-1, it is articulate. For G7X, it is tilting. Ironically, the mirrorless cameras and DSLR of Canon always have fully articulating screen, while Sony always have the tilting screen. It is refreshing to see that they swap those functions on their screen. You may think Sony is Canon and Canon is Sony just by looking on their screens. Both cameras have 20 megapixel max resolution that you can crop in when needed or if you need to frame your videos properly. There are so many similarities between these two cameras. I guess that's the buying dilemma of the consumers. Next, let's talk about the missing features. Again, to be able to pack in so much features on a small compact cameras with an affordable price, sacrifices need to be done. There's no headphone port on both of the cameras and you won't be able to monitor the audio, so make sure you set the right volume before you start recording. The next missing feature is the viewfinder. There's no viewfinder on both of these cameras. I think that's why they both lose it to the Sony RX Mark 7. On a sunny day, you're stuck with the LCD screen, but good thing they are bright enough though. And lastly, no in-body stabilization. It's not as smooth as the cameras on gimbals or action cameras. It's good enough for general walking vlogs and videos, but you will feel a little jittery at times, but all good. So there's so many similarities and missing features, but what is the real difference between the two? Let's start with the Sony ZV-1 and I'm shooting with it right now using an external microphone. The first advantage is the gyroscopic stabilization. I don't want to get to the science of this, but in a real world experience, I really don't feel much of a difference in terms of stabilization. Again, this is not sensor shift but gyro, meaning for tilting, so you basically get the same output as G7X Mark III, but I guess a little smoother on tilting. The next advantage is unlimited video recording limit. You can set this on the menu, it can record as long as your SD card can support it. Canon G7X Mark III can do 10 minutes only on 4K and 30 minutes in full HD. The next advantage is the external flash shoe. And this is great if you want to mount external flash, shotgun microphone, or continuous light. As long as the accessory supports this mount, you can add them. Next is the visible record button. It is located on the top of the camera, so if you're filming yourself, it is easier to press it. Although Canon G7X Mark III has the record button on the screen, a physical button on top is still appreciated. The next difference is the articulating screen. You can rotate the screen 360 degrees, and the best part if you want to protect your LCD when not in use, you can cover it. One of the advantages of this camera is the battery life. I always have the longer shooting time on Sony ZV-1 compared to Canon G7X Mark III. I think it is rated 260 shots compared to 235. 
Next is the product showcase function, perfect for content creators like me. Just a friendly tip, only use this function if you need to showcase a product. If you turn it on and you do hand gestures on your videos, autofocus will hunt. Next is 9060fps super slow motion. It is 16 times slower but only in 720p. Although the resolution suffers but if you need it, it's there. And lastly, the most important of all, the reliable autofocus. I mean, it's not bad to be honest on Canon G7X Mark III like other YouTubers are emphasizing. I don't trust some of the reviews online since Sony are sending this camera for a free review. So these YouTubers are heavily invested on nitpicking the competitors. Canon G7X Mark III autofocus is good, but Sony ZV-1 is better and more reliable. Next, to talk about the Canon G7X Mark III and I'm currently filming with it. I'm using an external mic and I hope I get it right because I'm adjusting it manually. So the first difference is the built-in flash. And this gears toward more on low-light photographers. The Sony ZV-1 has an external flash shoe, but you have to put a bulky and separate flash for it. Of course, external flash is better, but you lose the compact nature of these point-and-shoot cameras. So having this built-in flash is awesome. Next is the better LCD resolution. I noticed this when shooting myself, the LCD in Canon is way better looking than Sony. Sometimes too good to be true, honestly, the output on the screen is better than the actual output, but it's fun and good looking. Next is the continuous shooting or the FPS. It has 30 burst shots compared to Sony zv one's 24, great for fast moving objects. The next difference is the optical zoom. It can reach 100mm compared to Sony's 70mm, so the toss is between Sony's autofocus versus Canon's reach. The next advantage of this camera is the UHS card support. UHS stands for Ultra High Speed Card, so you can transfer files faster. The Sony ZV-1 doesn't support this. Next is more for aesthetics, I like the retro design. The two-tone color that looks like a retro Fuji camera, you can shoot without sacrificing the style. The next advantage is the full touchscreen settings. For Sony ZV-1 touchscreen only works for autofocus, but for Canon G7X Mark III, you can change the values of your settings on the screen itself. And that leads us to the last difference, the easier menu. Since this camera is touchscreen, you can change anything in an instant and everything is on the screen. You don't need to click the buttons and dive into the settings menu like what we do on the Sony cameras. So all in all, there are enough differences to consider when buying these two cameras. So I just got your drive verdict, the Sony ZV-1 or the Canon G7X Mark III. I'd say the Sony ZV-1 is gearing more for professional work, like a B-cam because of the great autofocus and the presence of the hot shoe for more professional accessories. The articulating screen also helps with the different shooting scenarios and angles. While the Canon G7X Mark III is gearing more for enthusiasts with that great retro look, easier menu, and that built-in flash. This is a one camera fits all travel companion and because of the full touchscreen like a cell phone, I tend to bring this more compared to the Sony ZV-1. In the end, do you need a professional compact camera or an easy to use one size fits all travel buddy? And there you go, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.